I know you work hard for a living. Maybe not as hard as me, but I know it's difficult out there in this current political and economic state. That's why at SMW318, we've created a time slot for the working individual. Every Friday from 6 to 8 p.m., dead air. We all know how hard it is to unwind when you're emotionally invested in conventional television programs. Dead air allows you to enjoy the sounds of silence for a few hours, which will help you unwind from that busy work week. Plus, we've paired the silence with our beautifully colored test card imagery. Vibrant bars of color will fill your screen, leaving you with the feelings of comfort and tranquility. Tune into Dead Air every Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. on Super Media World 318. Is the camera rolling? The camera is rolling. Okay. Hi. I'm Hollywood Nick Manker, Best Actor in 50 States, and you're watching the season premiere finale. I, I can't do this chair. Like, what is going on with this thing? Let's, no, we gotta strike this chair. Somebody bring me my chair. Come on, let's go. Little hustle, people. There we go, much better. And, uh... Yeah, this isn't gonna work either. Somebody bring me my table. All right. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Coffee, come on people, you know. I can't film without my coffee. Oh, this is delicious. Okay, cameraman, why is the camera still on my crotch? Let's raise it up. Let's ra raise it up, what are you doing? Can you hear me? I can't do the whole video leaning forward like this. It's just not gonna- <laughs> Hi, I'm Hollywood Nick Manker, best actor in 50 states, and you're watching the Christmas special and season finale, Nick's Video Store. My stunt double failed to perform a quick kick to the ball stunt, and now he's in the hospital. Despite what the doctors say, he'll be back to doing stunts in no time, or he'll be out on the streets. But the show must go on, and who better to take you on a cinematic journey than me, an actual movie star? It looks like you want to know about Santa with Muscles. Here's what I have to say about that movie. This film has some people in it, including Mila Kunis as some girl, Don Stark as an elf, I guess, uh, this guy, the Wrigley Stadium guy, and some other people I don't know the names of. Yeah, that's right, just, just throw those up on the screen there. Yep, all those people. And Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Oh, uh, and Polly Shore's brother is in this too, I guess. My stunt double also had in his notes to mention that a, uh, Clint Howard has a small role in this film. Oh yeah, he's one of the Three Stooges. He also asked me to mention how he got to meet Clint at a 2021 uh, nerd convention of some sort, but I'm not going to do that. Hollywood Hulk Hogan is a cool guy with great tastes, amazing fighting skills, and lots of money. Like myself, he's a man of culture and sophistication. Then some things happen and he loses his memory and begins to think he's Santa. And he has to save some kids or something, I don't know. I sort of dozed off by this point in the movie and missed some key plot points. I'm personally offended that they asked Hollywood Hulk Hogan to be in this film, and not me, Hollywood Nick Manker. Granted, I was a younger man at the time, but I was in still much better shape than Hollywood Hulk Hogan was. This film could have went from being box office trash to straight to video gold. Rule number 27 of Hollywood Nick's rules to live by, if you're gonna hire an actor with Hollywood in the name, then Hollywood Nick is your man of fame. The adults in this movie believe that Hollywood Hulk is the real Santa, and they also let strangers spend the night at the orphanage. What a bunch of idiots. This orphanage would never survive Hollywood Nick's business rescue nightmares. Tuesdays at 8, SMW 318.
This lady and old man wouldn't be able to stop Santa with muscles from going psycho crazy. A muscle-bound guy with no memory who thinks he's Santa is clearly off his rocker. The biggest plot hole in this movie is that Hollywood Hulk Hogan's main goal as Santa is to save an orphanage that houses only three measly children. The man is a rich bachelor with no sense of purpose and a child-shaped hole in his heart, so it's obvious how he could save the day. Just ship those brats off to some other orphanage. It's a no-brainer. Rule number 54 of Hollywood Nick's Rules to Live By, avoid children. They're just smaller, dumber adults and a huge waste of time. The kids in this orphanage are allowed to play in the catacombs that lie beneath the church. Disgusting. I'm starting to think that these kids should be sent to live somewhere else. Some place where they can't play with corpses all day, like the nasty little heathens that they are. This movie was cheesy, sleazy, and made me queasy. But I don't know. Children are dumb, so they probably loved it. Uh, let me think. Uh, good things about this movie. Um, um, it captures the feel of the low-budget 90s children's Christmas movie. Like most of the movies that my double picks, this movie is very cartoonish which I'm told is a good thing. The characters and scenarios are over the top, unbelievable, and ridiculous. Just like in a cartoon. My double says it really captures the holiday spirit, but personally, the sunny California setting didn't give me the warm, fuzzy Christmas feelings. Rule number 401, if you're gonna make a Christmas movie, then there better be some snow in it. That way I know it's a Christmas movie. I found the villain's germophobia humorous. I also enjoyed the techniques he used to interrogate his enemies, many of which I've dabbled in myself. This guy's whole crew were idiotic simpletons, which are great if you just want lackeys, but horrible for getting anything actually accomplished. Rule number 227, hire henchmen that have IQs between 90 and 100. Hollywood Hulk Hogan does a lot of fighting in this movie, some of which appear to be done by a stunt double. Not saying that there's anything wrong with using a stunt double, but wasn't he a professional wrestler? He was basically an over-glorified stunt double already. He may as well have had another actor do his speaking roles too. I don't know, someone like maybe uh, yours truly. Then he could have done my stunts. A missed opportunity. This film has two stars from That 70s Show in it, Mila Kunis and Don Stark. No relation to Tony. This is Mila Kunis's first movie. The movie poster shows Hollywood Hulk Hogan holding two dweebs, and I don't recall seeing either of these dorks in the actual movie. It also shows him donning his famous handlebar mustache, which isn't the way that his mustache is groomed in the actual film. This is what we refer to in the business as false advertising. Santa with Muscles came out the same year as Jingle All the Way, another muscle-bound Christmas film from 1996. 1996 truly was the golden year for Hollywood. It was also the year that Minkerwood Studios was first established, which is why we've only featured films from 1996 in this season of Nick's Video Store. Bet you didn't catch that, did you? It's a little Easter egg. I just told it to you. So now it's not hidden anymore. Way to go. Way to miss it. So there you have it. Santa with muscles. So stop on by Hollywood Nick's Videorama and check out a copy of this Christmas classic to watch with your family this holiday season. Or to watch by yourself. Or to watch with whoever I don't care as long as you're a paying customer. Rule number one, always rent from Hollywood Nick's Videorama. Or is that rule 302? Anyway, I have more important things to get back to. So until next time, I'm Hollywood Nick Manker wishing you a Merry Christmas Happy holiday, a happy new year, and a happy what else you may be celebrating this holiday season. And remember, like and subscribe to Super Meteor World, or Hollywood Nick is gonna take you out. Super Meteor World is running wild, brother.